welcome back to the new video on upsampling and its spectrum um, this video is quite important and it is a case building video for us for the upcoming videos and um, so we are going to discuss about the spectrum of an upsample signal and in the next video we will discuss about why the spectrum looks like the way it looks okay so I would suggest that you pay a lot of attention to this video and the upcoming videos um, they are quite important and some of the concepts that are that will be captured in there are very implied and they are not captured in many leading books okay so I would request and I would suggest that um, you pay attention to these videos um, so um, just to recap what we did in our last video um, we tried to derive a relationship that um, if I already have a pre-sampled discrete sequence and if I upsample it by a certain factor then what happens to those indices and we came to the conclusion that well okay the index is going to be scaled by the factor of u okay so uh, k times n by n gets translated to k times n divided by u n right so now um, let us see um, how the uh, actual upsampling uh, process uh, going to happen and we also uh, will have a look um, into the spectrum of an upsample signal we'll try to derive a certain rule of thumbs and which is going to help you um, to directly figure out the, how the spectrum should look like and why the spectrum looks the way it looks we'll capture it in our next video okay so um, let's get started um, so I will start off with the um, time domain sequence and um, um, so let me draw the scale um, the diagrams may not be pretty <laughs> but I hope it will uh, be able to convey the message that I want to capture here um, so let us say um, this is my time axis t okay running time axis t for both and this uh, plot is going to capture my 1x data rate so basically I am sampling certain analog signal at sampling frequency fs and this guy is going to capture the data at 2 times x okay so it's basically 2 times fs of my originally sampled data so um, let's say that um, I have the certain analog sequence looking something like this okay and I'm going to sample the sequence so okay I will take only a few samples so that um, the things become more clear okay so let's take one sample from here one sample from here um, one sample from here and one sample from here okay so four samples are sufficient for us to get the understanding and we already know that well this is my delta t right the sampling time this is sampling time delta t and these are the samples that I have picked up at certain rate and that rate that I'm going to uh, call it as 1x this is my 1x rate and I'm sampling at frequency sampling frequency fs right now I want to perform the upsampling so upsampling goes to two different stages okay so the, we are going to discuss in this video only the stage one the stage two we will discuss once once we build the case uh, on the spectrum and how the spectrum and why the spectrum looks the way it looks so the first step that happens um, if you want to upsample already a discrete sequence is that okay so first uh, let me capture these guys here um, so let's say that I have the same sequence I'll just um, try to draw those sequences here again so um, this guy is slightly lower okay and this guy is slightly higher and this guy is almost the same size okay so these are the original 1x data sequences now what I will do is I'm going to have I'm going to stop zeros basically centered in the middle so because I'm going to stop only one zero here the reason is because I'm upsampling by factor of two okay so if you see here I have got four samples here if you see the number of samples I have got four samples here and so if I am supposed to upsample the sequence by factor of two I'm supposed to get eight samples right so the way I'm going to realize eight samples the first step is this so I have got eight samples here so you can see okay so the original samples will remain as it is plus I'm going to have zero stuffed in the middle okay so these guys have no value technically they are all zeros they are the, these guys have certain values okay they have certain amplitude range but these guys have no value at all but you will notice that um, now what I will consider is my sampling time is this okay it has become half what originally was so actually um, if you consider this as one second let us say this is one second okay this is one second then in one second I'm taking four samples now I'm going to pick up eight samples but the way I'm going to pick up eight samples is slightly different 
okay the alternate samples are zeros now don't get confused about it these are the intermediate steps and we will try to come uh, when we discuss about the second step um, the things will become more clear now by doing this process something happens to the spectrum okay we'll discuss this uh, in a short while so um, uh, just give you a brief that what happens in the step two okay so in the step two what we will do is um, obviously this is not the sequence right this has actually changed the characteristic of the sequence this is not what I'm looking for so I need to estimate and I'm supposed to basically interpolate I'm supposed to interpolate a sample between these two guys at this position so basically I will come up with certain estimation here so that is what uh, we are going to do in our next video so I'll come up with certain estimation based on the uh, certain algorithm and this estimation is going to decide the interpolation so um, when I then into the interpolation and that time I will have a sequence well which is a perfectly upsampled 2 times x uh, data rate signal okay so we'll discuss this step later um, this is basically the step 2 this is the step 2 we are not going to discuss now um, but we need to discuss a more important point now uh, and that is how the spectrum of this guy going to look like so now if you see here the spectrum has the sequence has changed right the sequence is no longer the same as it used to be now you can see the transitions between the points and this transition is going to give us some something something really funny okay and let's look at that how it looks like so first we'll look at um, how the spectrum is going to look like uh, we'll do some kind of a rule of thumb uh, which from which we can directly uh, come up with the explanation of how it is going to look like okay so let us say this guy this guy is the uh, spectrum for my 1x data and this guy is a spectrum of my 2x data okay and what I'll do is I will uh, I will say that this is the maximum range this is my FS okay the capturing frequency range so this point is FS and I will call this point as 2 times fs. This is 2 times fs. This is fs. Right? And we had seen before in our previous videos that, well, all the frequencies uh, which are of my interest, I can capture digital frequencies in fs by 2. So this is the point at which I'm going to capture all the frequencies fs by 2. Now, let's say that um, this guy has got a certain spectrum. Okay? Um, let's say this guy has a certain spectrum. and uh, It looks something like this. So let's say this is how the spectrum looks like for this guy. And if you remember, um, it will have an image also. It will have an image, something like this. Okay. For my FS, uh, up to FS. And uh, we had seen before, um, okay, I'm not going to capture the part which is beyond this point, okay, for 1x data but I will capture it for here now one of the property of the Fourier transform is okay so this is the Fourier transform we are in the frequency domain we are in the frequency domain and this is the time domain and we are going from time domain to frequency domain via the Fourier transform okay or we can call it as a discrete Fourier transform now what we can see here is that um, we already have a spectrum nicely spaced uh, positioned here now the moment you put the zeros between the samples something strange happens okay and if you remember that we had mentioned that the property of the Fourier transform is the transform is periodic in nature and if I want to take the rule of thumb and I had mentioned now it goes up to plus infinity if you keep increasing the frequency f and correspondingly if you keep increasing your sampling frequency you will come across the same spectrum anywhere you go okay from plus infinity minus infinity so now here what we are doing is we are increasing the sampling frequency fs okay so as a rule of thumb so what we will have here in the spectrum is where the original spectrum will remain intact okay the original spectrum is going to remain intact and what we will see here what we will see here is a replication of the same spectrum so we will see a replication here okay we will see a replication here of the same spectrum something like this and how uh, we are going to relate this um, with our rule of thumb is if you remember for the downsampling we came up with a certain concept of the fault lines right um, which was falling right in the middle here and here uh, for the upsampling uh, the rule of thumb is that you can consider this as a slider okay you just consider this as a slider and 
when you do the upsampling of the sequence, the slider is going to move in this direction. And a as it moves in this direction, basically, now it is going to come here. Okay, so when you do the upsampling, now this is the point of interest. So the all the frequency ranges will be capturing up to this point, and you will see that um, the upsampled data has got a replication. Okay, so you will see here that, well, okay, we have replicated. So this region, this entire region is a replication. This entire region is replicated. Okay. This is a repetition. This is the repetition. Okay, it is a repetition of the same signal. So now, the question is why it is repeating like this. Okay, and to address that question, we'll, uh, we'll discuss it in our next video. <coughs> we'll need to do a lot of um, uh, introduction with the some of the concepts of the vectors and um, the phases and all the stuff. So we'll discuss it in our next video. Um, so the... Uh, the concept uh, needs to be cleared is that when I do the upsampling, okay, and when you have the zero stuffed in the middle, the spectrum is going to repeat, okay, and so this is also called the image frequencies. This is the image; they are called the image frequencies, basically. <coughs> okay, so um, uh, we'll discuss why this spectrum looks like this in the next video, okay, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed this, and I will look forward to see you in the next video.